Ladies, I think it's time to switch roles. Action! Lindsay Lohan is shocked by the latest allegations that she has had breast implants. Will 17-year-old really get implants? I think that's disgusting that they'll say it about me. You know, it's whatever. We're finally going to turn 18. I know. Can you believe it? What should we do? Let's get laid. Yeah. Sarah, you are not the hottest lady here in the house. Pondering 17-year-old Lindsay Lohan's breast while laying in a bathtub, candlelight, listening to Sade. I am really sorry if I offended anyone. That was truly not my intention. I can't believe that he would do something like that to me. Now when people look at me, they think that I'm something I'm not just because of one incident one night with someone who I was in love with. Hey celebrities, it's Vitaly and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna go ahead and talk about how effed up the 2000 society was towards women. To say that I was merely disgusted while researching for this video would be an understatement of this century. Today is gonna be a longer video, so get yourself comfy, grab a snack and remember, once you subscribe to this channel, there is no way back. Now come on now! By the way, last week I've made a similar video but only focusing on women body shaming in the media. So if you're interested in that too, check it out after this one. I'm a female advocate at this point and I'm so here for it. So buckle up legend, you're not ready for this one, only on Vitaly's channel. Don't forget to like this video celeb don't be shady, that's all. spotlight are constantly pressured to pander to an industry where one thing sells more than anything. S it feels like they belong to their audience and their lives are rarely their own. Time and time again we hear stories of women being abused throughout Hollywood. The pressure for females to achieve or maintain the work they do usually leads them to do things that leave them feeling degraded. And trust me, I'm gonna prove it to you today. I wanna begin with so-called celebrity coming of age countdown. The coming of age of a female celebrity has always been a weird and disgusting loophole in society's sexual norm. As crazy as it is, in the not is, well, and probably even now, adult males were dreaming of deflowering some of the teen celebs who just turned 18, knowing damn well that it would have resulted in a statuary charge just a few hours earlier. It's beyond creepy to count down the days until it's appropriate to sexualize a minor, but for some reason it's been somewhat socially acceptable for years, and it all started way before the 2000s. The 70s and 80s saw plenty of rock songs about the lust for jailbait, seemingly making it acceptable to sing about a desire for underage teens. One of those songs is Jailbait by Motorhead. Just check out these questionable lyrics. I don't even dare to ask your age. It's enough to know you're here backstage. You're Jailbait and I just can't wait. Jailbait baby, come on. In today's social climate, it would be career side. Okay, back to the noughties. In 1999, a tabloid magazine published a photo spread from Britney Spears' 18th birthday, proclaiming her accession into legal adulthood. Let's read it together. Britney has grown up, and boy, does it show. The teen dream looks ravishing in a knee-high boots and a snappy snakeskin mini outfit. A baby no more, her darling neckline reveals the ample bust that Britney reportedly enhanced with the implants when she was just 17. Which I don't know if she has ever gotten them, cause the Rolling Stone magazine once said that she had but then got it removed. But Britney herself claimed that she's considered of getting it at some point, but has never done so. But it's none of our business anyway. I wish the mascara would not creep up quite so high. I mean, if that's the only thing you took away from the picture of Britney blowing out her birthday candle, you do you, I guess. Just from these small paragraphs, we can see how the media relentlessly objectified and sexualized her body. For no reason, honestly. And don't even get me started on the questions regarding her V-card. How do you feel about all the conversation? some speculation about your virginity and whether you are a virgin or not. I really wish I would have never said anything to begin with because I'm kind of stuck in this little place where people are always asking me but you know that's just something that's part of growing up and that's just something that we all have to deal with so. Yeah. Have there been any changes on that front? <laughs> <laughs> that's a personal question. I'd like to think that at first Killer Day's a popular female singer. Publicly, they'll claim to be virgins, but privately, he hid it. 
As you can see, if male stars talked about having sex, he was a cause for celebration. Don't do it. Let's get to the summer of 2004, which was a hell of a time. I call it the countdown marathon, for <laughs> sake. While countdown clocks have been running for years, the Olsen twins were clearly special news. We've all seen them grow up. They spent the best parts of their childhood starting in our favorite movies. Mary Kate and Ashley are headed for London. London? <laughs> And as crazy as it is, men across the world were patiently waiting until they hit puberty. Damn! In June, Mary Kate and Ashley's 18th birthday was accompanied by no less than seven <gasps> websites dedicated to counting down the minutes until the twins officially reached adulthood. Lock up the boyfriend, a New York Post announced. The Olsen twins are legal and they're loaded. Gentlemen, start your engines and get out your best booze. The Olsen twins are waiting for you. Yeah, of course they're waiting for some random no names. Sorry, not sorry. It got as bad as people even made this reckless cartoon animation. We're finally gonna turn 18! I don't know, can you believe it? What should we do? Oh no, me neither. Let's get laid. Yeah! Ashley! Say Ashley! All the guys we say we're mighty fine! When we turn 18, we're gonna knock boots all the time! And the other times we're gonna be planning out who we're gonna park! Yeah! We'll need a golden shower later to decide! Can I just not comment anything on that? Thank you. There is of course a huge irony in all of this. I was always wondering, what are the expectations of those men who are counting down the days? Oh yeah, now I can totally bang her, what's up, what's up bro? No. No you can't. And no you will not. You're one of the thousands of those nerdy unemployed p**ks who just been creepy on the internet. That's it. They don't know you and never will. I'm sorry to bring that to you. Luckily for the twins, the attention span for this kind of obsession is pretty short. Less than a week past their birthday, most of the websites have shut down. Two weeks later, on July 2nd, another celebrity turned 18. Miss Lindsay Lohan. Now it was her turn. It was a date obsessed over by men who once again were much older than 18. They couldn't wait until it would be legal to do something that they obviously were already doing. Fantasize about with a teenage girl. And it wasn't just shady websites. The media supported the trend too. The August issue of Rolling Stone featured the newly adult Lindsay with the headline Hot, ready and legal. Ready for what, I'm afraid to ask. Anyway, so... The article begins with Lindsay's assurance that her breasts are real. Cause that was like the biggest speculation at the time. Lindsay says she hasn't had a job and people who talk about it are perverted. Is it perverted to discuss whether 17-year-old Lindsay Lohan's breasts are real? No, but I'll tell you what is. Pondering 17-year-old Lindsay Lohan's breasts while laying in a bathtub, candlelight, listening to Sade. That's our girl! But right now, Lindsay is setting the record straight about her latest tabloid rumor. I can't even believe I'm talking about this. This is so disturbing. Lindsay Lohan is shocked by the latest allegations that she has had breast implants. Will 17-year-old really get implants? I think that's disgusting that they'll say it about me. You know, it's... Whatever. You can't do anything but laugh about it. Well, Lindsay seemed to be taking it all in good stride at her photo shoot to be the new face for Dooney and Burke handbags. I think it's more about the bags than about showing my bare body. <laughs> That's unlike the inside pages of the June issue of Vanity Fair, where Lindsay is posing in an itsy bitsy bikini. I was so uncomfortable though. I was like wearing a robe till like the last second. I felt like naked. Lindsay Lohan has been 18 for just under a week. When she tells me her breasts are real, I didn't ask. Gentlemen never do. Though my reporting, discreet visual fact checking, and a goodbye hug seems to confirm the statement. Как вы, блядь, заебали уже, Как же вы меня заебли? Can we also revisit one disturbing Donald Trump moment? Yeah, I didn't think that I would bring him up on this channel one day, too. What do you think of Lindsay Lohan? Huh? I think she's hot. There's something there, right? Yes. Do you but you have to like freckles. I've seen a, a you know, close-up of her chest. 
Yes. And a lot of freckles. Are you into freckles? If the father's a wreck, like the way he is, right. you imagine this right. with this troubled Yeah, kid? you're probably right. She's probably deeply troubled and therefore great in bed. How I mean, come the deeply troubled women? Yes. You know, deeply, deeply troubled. Right. They're always the best in bed. If for some reason, what I said is true. I mean, they're, they're just unbelievable. I can tell from the... You don't want to be with them for the long term, but for the short term, there's nothing like it. Reminding you, she just turned 18 at the time. And of course, it's the Howard Stern show. I did not expect anything else did you the internet has also sprouted the countdown clocks for hillary duff golf prodigy michelle Wee, and even emma watson pretty much for everybody to be honest that's suspicious if some of those things were published today it would be ripped to shreds on twitter but 20 years ago a leering tone was the industry norm the year 2013 tmz posted yet another disturbing article kendall jenner 53 days until she turns 18. not that we're counting the photo pic says a lot too it appears that kendall jenner has the blessed opportunity to follow in her big sister's footsteps now that kendall has officially turned 18 you can look at her overly Instagram photos without worry. At least six companies have made offers to Jenner and her partner of choice $1.8 million to get it on for the camera. Happy birthday. You're looking good. Kendall, are you going to take the $1.8 million for the movie? That's what TMZ says. Like Kim. Then, the same offer was made to Kylie. Kylie Jenner has only been 18 for a week now, and she's already got a solicitation to make a in a letter obtained by E.T., Stephen Hirsch, the founder of Vivid Entertainment, who famously released Kim Kardashian's tape, writes that Kylie and her 25-year-old boyfriend, quote, remind us a lot of Kim and Ray J. They just wanted to keep up with the Kardashians, I guess. <laughs> That's it, we're done. All those offers from the adult company showed that in the minds of many, the girls were simply p stars in waiting. A few years ago, actress Natalie Portman spoke out about the sexual chaos she faced as a teenager. She expressed how media treatment affected her negatively, even later in life. Check it out. Let me tell you about my own experience. I turned 12 on the set of my first film, The Professional, in which I played a young girl who befriends a hitman and hopes to avenge the murder of her family. The character is simultaneously discovering and developing her womanhood, her voice, and her desire. At that moment in my life, I too was discovering my own womanhood, my own desire, and my own voice. I was so excited at 13 when the film was released and my work and my art would have a human response. I excitedly opened my first fan mail to read a fantasy that a man had written me. A countdown was started on my local radio show to my 18th birthday, euphemistically the date that I would be legal to sleep with. Movie reviewers talked about my budding breasts and reviews. I understood very quickly, even as a 13-year-old, that if I were to express myself sexually, I would feel unsafe, and that men would feel entitled to discuss and objectify my body to my great discomfort. So I quickly adjusted my behavior. I rejected any role that even had a kissing scene and talked about that choice deliberately in interviews. I emphasized how bookish I was and how serious I was, and I cultivated an elegant way of dressing. I built a reputation for basically being prudish, conservative, nerdy, serious, in an attempt to feel that my body was safe and that my voice would be listened to. At 13 years old, the message from our culture was clear to me. I felt the need to cover my body and to inhibit my expression and my work in order to send my own message to the world that I'm someone worthy of safety and respect. A world in which I could wear whatever I want, say whatever I want, and express my desire however I want without fearing for my physical safety or reputation, that would be the world in which female desire and sexuality could have its greatest expression and fulfillment. To people of all genders here with us today, let's find a space where we mutually, consensually look out for each other's pleasure. Let's make a revolution of desire. While talking about this sensitive topic, I couldn't help but mention Paris Hilton's infamous scandal. And we all know what I'm talking about. One night in Paris. What are you doing, Paris? Beautiful beast. In 2018, Paris revisited the experience of having her tape released without her consent. I felt like every single person had watched it and seen me naked and was talking behind my back. I just just felt so betrayed. This is not some random guy. This was someone I was with for a few years. That you loved? I thought I did. And 
I can't believe that he would do something like that to me. It's something that changed my life forever. You know, when I was a little girl, I looked up to people like Princess Diana and these women, and I feel like he took that away from me. And this is not what I planned. I didn't want to be known as that. And it's now when people look at me, they think that I'm something I'm not just because of one incident one night with someone who I was in love with. People assume, oh, she's a slut just because of one thing that happened to me. And it's it's hard because I'll never I'll have to live with that for the rest of my life and explain it to my children. And it's I don't, it's something that's changed my life forever. And I'll never be able to erase it. I mean, the the worst thing about it, it seemed to me. I can tell how, how upsetting this is for you, Kathy. I totally understand that. Now that we think about it, we as a society handled that whole Paris tape thing pretty bad. Really, really bad, to be exact. Let's be honest, if the tape was released today, we would call it revenge what it actually is basically paris's tape was released without her consent when she was only 19 years old by the 32 year old man that she was madly in love with and american pop culture really used that fact as the basis of every paris hilton show we would make for the next two decades you don't have to think that paris hilton is a good or admirable or even an okay person to find the circumstances of the tape so beyond insensitive the tape was leaked by rick salomon in 2003 shortly before the the December premiere of The Simple Life. In April 2004, he began distributing the film through the adult company and in June of the same year officially released it to an adult website. He then had the kahunas to sue Paris for defamation for publicly claiming that she'd been out of it when the tape was being made. She in turn sued over the release of the video and was awarded $400,000. And it's fair to say that while Paris appeared deeply disgruntled about the film, its release just three months ahead of the debut of her MTV series The Simple Life must have had the show's producers rubbing their hands with glee. Although Paris said publicly again and again that she did not want her tape to be made public, it just seemed so obvious to everyone that she must have wanted the whole world to watch her doing things and secretly might be delighted by the fact that so many people had. That was one of the most painful experiences to go through to have been with someone and really loved and trusted them and something that was one night of your life where you never thought anyone would see it and then the whole world is watching it and judging and just being so cruel and it was just mortifying and I didn't leave my house for months and I didn't want to see anyone. I canceled the press tour for The Simple Life. I, it was so just painful to go through that and just to have the whole world just knowing that everyone was watching it and just felt that because of what he did to me the whole world would always assume that i was, was something that i wasn't definitely took a while for me to feel brave enough to go out there and my first thing that i did was actually saturday night live with jimmy fallon and i feel like i took control of the narrative there i don't know how to describe it but i just felt like i was taking control of my narrative in that way I don't know if a lot of people know, the, the Hilton's own hotels all over the world, right? Yes, they're New York, London, Paris. Oh, wait, so there it actually is a Paris Hilton? Yes, there is. Is it hard to get into the Paris Hilton? Actually, it's a very exclusive hotel, no matter what you've heard. The society invaded Hilton's privacy and then somehow blamed herself for that invasion. The world concluded that she wanted it, because who would say no to attention, even when that attention as humiliating as the kind Paris received. And by extension, it threatened to humiliate anyone who was being compared to her. For a period in the notice, many other young blondes felt it necessary to explain to the press that they themselves were not Nothing like Paris Hilton. Do I look like a f Hilton's sister? Shauna Miller said in a W magazine. Yeah, and check me out on the internet, heaven s. I don't go to clubs, Blake Lively told Seventeen magazine. I don't party, I don't dance on tables, and I don't like s tapes. By the way, three years later, her nude pictures would be posted online without her permission. Karma is a bitch. Now come on now. Today's the only fans era could never. In 2004, South Park even released the Paris Hilton-centric episode. This is how crazy it was. The South Park Chamber of Commerce is pleased to bring you the first annual Who is the Biggest <laughs> Showdown? Start this competition off, but... Uh... I'll show you how we start it off. <laughs> you love me very much, don't you? How much you love me? Then in 2006, the Paris tape was parodied by Pink in her Stupid Girls music video. Maybe if I act like that, flipping my blonde hair back. 
fans proclaim this song to be as a pick me or not like other girls anthem. But in reality, the whole point of the song was that women should not have to dumb themselves down in order to be successful. Because Paris was a perfect symbol of what girls were thought they were supposed to be like in 2006. So it's about the mindlessness. You know, some people have called stupid girls hypocritical because yeah. you have bared just as much skin in many of your own videos. I didn't write the song to win a popularity contest. Mm -hmm. I did it to spark a discussion because I thought it was a discussion that needed to be had. There are people that are relieved Mm -hmm. that someone finally said it. There's people that think it's just hilarious, the video. Mm -hmm. There's people that think I'm a hypocrite, but my point is not that sexy is a bad thing. My point is that sexy and smart are not oil and water, and that you don't have to dumb yourself down to be cute. Paris was upset with me. She was? She was. What did she say and how did you hear from her? I was in a club. She said, I just want you to know that I get it. Like, I'm not dumb. I just play like I'm dumb. And I was like, that's kind of my point. Right. I'm gonna go. <laughs> Good to see ya. After this video, check out my previous ones too. They're also iconic. To mock her the way society did, we had to have bought everything that pop culture sold us. They believe that women and women's bodies are shameful. This brings us to yet another misogyny and racism case. Janet Jackson's 2004 Super Bowl performance with none other than Justin Timberlake. Come on, come on touch me. To sum up briefly, Janet and her stylist came up with a costume stunt. In the end of the performance, Timberlake was supposed to pull away the bustier to reveal a red lace bra, but instead the garment malfunctioned and he exposed Jackson's breast instead. The rest is history. <laughs> Choose your He was broadcasted to the whole world with only a nipple shield to cover her modesty. Which is weird, by the way, considering that it was not planned. But it's a whole different topic. Although it was mere milliseconds, Janet's partial nudity triggered a wave of outrage across conservative America. Following the broadcast, CBS asked Jackson to issue a public apology. My decision to uh, change the Super Bowl performance was actually made after the final rehearsal. MTV... CBS, the NFL had no knowledge of this whatsoever, and unfortunately, the whole thing went wrong in the end. I am really sorry if I offended anyone, that was truly not my intention. And while she was being put on blast by the media, Timberlake had pretty much nothing to say. All I could say was, oh my god, oh my god, I'm frustrated at the whole situation. I'm frustrated that my character is being questioned and the matter of fact is, you know, I had a good year, especially with my music. Got a call prior to the show from Janet and her choreographer saying that they wanted to do a costume reveal. Now I was under the impression that what was going to be revealed in the costume reveal was a bustier, forgive me, got in, didn't really have time to rehearse it, got to the field, went on stage, was in the moment, and when what happened happened, I mean, I was completely shocked. Nipplegate caused the media storm. In an unexpected turn of events, Janet's music and videos were blacklisted from all networks and radio, which resulted in her The Mira Joe album to underperform. Despite Timberlake causing the accident, he famously did not apologize until it was time for him to guess what? To promote his second album. Super Bowl incident. You kind of have to have a sense of humor about yeah. all of this because like, like you said, everybody takes this so seriously. Was it the performance or was it the aftermath of the Super Bowl that was the mistake? I mean, I guess it was a little bit of both. In my honest, you know, opinion now, it was more the aftermath from me. There could have been ways that I could have gone about it, handled it better. What could you have done differently? I'm a part of a community that consider themselves artists. And if there was something that I could have done in her defense that was more that I could have realized than I would have. The other half of me thought to myself, wow, like we still haven't found the weapons of mass destruction and everybody cares about this. It's an understatement to say that it was sort of unfair if you look, if you, if you consider it 50-50, I probably got 10% of mm -hmm. the blame. And I think that says something about society. America's harsher on women. And I think that America's unfairly harsh on ethnic people. The apology did not surface until 2006, two years later. That's crazy that he didn't come to her defense when she was blacklisted. Was it planned, Janet? No. I had read some another magazine that you regret making that apology. Is that mm -hmm. true? It was an accident. 
they thought it was important that I did. What are you apologizing for? Yeah, why for? am I apologizing for an accident? Well, do you think in any way that Justin Timberlake left you hanging out there? <laughs> All the emphasis was put on me, mm -hmm. not on Justin. And uh, we were friends. Mm -hmm. I consider him a friend. And, and I have to say that Justin has reached out. To, we haven't spoken, but mm -hmm. has reached out to speak with me. And certain things you just don't do to friends. Yeah. And um, in my own time, I'll so give him a call. Say, if they're going to worry about, you know, children and what children should and shouldn't see, I think they should address all issues on TV. I think there's a lot of violence on television as well. And there's a lot of hypocrisy about beating up on Janet Jackson and not a lot of other things that children um, um, have access to. A lesser known story from that time was the mistreatment of Shakira by the media. I love Shakira. Whenever, wherever, we're meant to be. As a non-native English speaker from Colombia, debuted in the North American market in 2001, she was subject to many questions and stories in the media berating her ability to speak the language, as well as frequent sexual comments about her looks and performances. She made a name for herself in America by letting us all know that her breasts were, quote, small and humble. Please welcome Shakira. Shakira! I got a chance to host your record release party for laundry service. Yeah, and I appreciated that. Oh, a lot. Uh, but yeah, at, at that have point, you there introducing me to the Anglo world it meant a lot to me. The Anglo world, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that devilish world, the Anglo world. <laughs> so yeah, the Anglo market seemed like oh, yeah, the right. Anglo market. It's like a Godzilla what is movie. That? Your song, uh, Whenever, Wherever, huge hit, number one in this country. Whenever I mention it to anyone, the first thing that springs to mind is some lyrics mm, that you have in I the know song. I where you're going. Yes, you do. It's, <laughs> explain to me the lyrics, lucky my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. I think it's <laughs> self-explanatory. <laughs> Did you write but that? Sometimes there's days when I, when I look at myself in the mirror and I like what I see and there's days when I don't like what I see. The day when I wrote the song was one of those days when I was feeling good about myself and I was thinking, you know what, maybe I don't need to be 34B to feel good <laughs> <laughs> about what I, what I am. So uh, I just wanted to be frank in this song. Well, and, mission uh, accomplished. <laughs> This was undoubtedly connected to her identity as a Latina woman in pop culture, where people from outside of white America were inherently seen as exotic tokens. Writing songs used to be so difficult for me. A few years ago, I could barely speak English, she said in 2001, and I used to write my songs with a dictionary. Oh, as a Russian, I definitely can't relate. When I look back at my first videos on this channel, I get so embarrassed of the way my accent sounds in there, and my vocabulary also leaves much to be desired, let's be honest. But at the same time I can look back and see how far I've come because only 15 months ago it took a while for me to process what I want to say but obviously there is still a lot of work to be done so thanks for sticking with me mm. in a recent interview with Cosmo magazine she had this to say about her experience in the industry when I first crossed over to the American market many magazines would put emphasis on the fact that I was Colombian I was called the second finest export of Colombia I guess they were referring to in as the first one I was like why journalists asking me about drug trafficking. My country is much more than that. It's time to briefly talk about the interesting, to say the least, competition TV shows. Women were by far the most likely to be exploited in these types of reality shows. They were often degraded, exploited, and publicly humiliated in order to get people watching. For example, remember the Scream Queen show? In the 2008 series, 10 aspiring female actors compete for a supposed breakout role in a Saw 6 movie. In the first episode, the acting coach tells the women to eat a piece of fruit as seductively as possible. Welcome to your first acting class. We're gonna need it. Looking sexy on screen is just as important as looking terrified. So, ladies, pick a piece. I would like each of you to eat this piece of fruit as seductively as possible. Use your head. I'm a very sexual person, and so I definitely went for banana. But as soon as they do that, he goes, Jesus. Look, I asked for a simple seduction. I get a bunch of girls having sex with fruit. I'm asking you to be storytellers, not stars. He knew exactly what he was doing. Like, was the other way to seductively eat a freaking banana? The gaslighting in this one is real. But it's not even the worst moment of the episode. By the time one actress named Sarah wins the challenge, the judge is admitting to her face that she's, quote, not the hardest one. Sarah, you are not the hottest. 
lady here in the house, but you have skills. That would be my 13th reason, to be honest. Poor girl, Jesus f***ing Christ. Although the show is freaking entertaining, the cruelty and body shaming of the Scream Queens cannot be denied. The first season of the show premiered in 2007 and attracted a lot of attention. So much attention that the finale got over 5 million viewers. The Wild Dating Show followed the band Poison's lead vocalist Brad Michaels as he meets 25 ladies in hopes of finding his one true love. However, the show came with lots of awkward moments and weird things that simply would not fly on any dating shows nowadays. For example, in the second episode, the girls were challenged to seduce Brad over the phone's in front of the other girls. Hello, ladies, everyone's seated, everyone's sitting down. We're gonna talk about talking dirty to me. I spend a lot of time out on the road, and in order to have a significant other and make it work, you have to have a great back and forth on the phone. We're not gonna be able to see each other, so you have to use your imagination. So just give me everything you got. Oh, and by the way, did I mention that while doing that, his was hooked up to a machine that measures blood flow. Okay, ladies, this is plethysmograph. We're going to use this device. It will measure the blood flow of the cavernassal artery. <laughs> All right, I'm calling the first girl. What do you think about English women? English women are hot. How would you like that? Really, really hot. Thank you. You're gonna give me this fantasy. You're thinking about it. You're gonna you give me. You are my fantasy. Give me hot. That's what I'm trying to do. Is it working yet? Girl number eight. Who was number eight? It just went bad. We just never got going. Not gonna lie, iconic, but also kind of problematic. But all of that is rainbows and butterflies comparing to the infamous Swan Show. It all began with a nationwide search for over 200,000 hopefuls, each looking to fulfill their fantasies of going from ugly ducklings. People just don't understand what it feels like to feel ugly. I'm afraid that nobody else would ever love me. To beautiful swans. Which, by the way, attracted almost universal backlash. It premiered in 2004 with 16 women all hoping to make it to the grand pageant finale. And how would they get there? By undergoing a complete plastic surgery transformation. Throughout the season, the host and the team of consultants refer to the girls as ugly ducklings and ordinary, while suggesting that these women need all of those procedures. Oh my god! Oh my god, I don't even look like me! For the record, there is nothing wrong with the plastic surgery, especially if you feel like it's gonna change your life and self-esteem for the better. But this show was brutal to those women, and the choice to make it a competition show was absolutely unnecessary and ridiculous, whatever you wanna call it. Many contestants on the show have spoken out against it, most notably season 1 contestant Lori Arias, and she was given the most procedures of any swan. I have always had very low self-esteem. One day I had had enough, so I just lowered the fat and worked out. I didn't realize that there would be so much hanging skin. In 2010, Lori said that she regained all the weight she lost in the aftermath of the series, and she fell into a deep depression. I did think that the show could fix me psychologically because it appeared that it had fixed the girls psychologically from season one. They were glamorous and Everything was fine. When the reveal happened, I was shocked out of my mind. I could not believe that that was me. And so, as soon as the camera stopped, I ran. I ran and I demanded my face back. Even though I was going through all the changes on this one, you're still yourself inside. It's the inside that needed to be fixed first. When the show first ended, at least I could still go out. I could do things. Probably around 08. My life has started to decline. I don't do anything. I don't go out. I don't brush my hair. I don't change my clothes. I don't shower. I don't even step on the porch. Obviously, there is a lot more problematic shows out there and even more disturbing misogyny moments. Misogynistic moments, I'm sorry. But I just wanted to provide a few examples to illustrate how women have been treated and portrayed on TV in order to get attention and traffic. 
Honestly, looking back in the early odds, there was no right way to be a woman. There were only different ways to fail. And we definitely learned that from pop culture. In recent years, all this craziness has mutated as society has become more enlightened about mental health and all sorts of addiction. And it seems like nobody's asking today's young stars about their V-card. Well, not on a massive scale at least. Okay, celebrities, I think this is it for today's video. That was a long one, I know, I'm sorry. If you enjoy this type of content as much as I do, please, don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below and of course like this video. Yes, celebrity, I'm talking to you. Y'all are being shady to me lately. I hope you remember that in the end of every video we meet in the comment section down below to discuss the topic. And today is no exception. After this video, check out my previous ones too. They're also iconic. Follow me on Instagram at Vitali for the record and I will see you in my next video this week and remember your ex is zeph and toxic the best way to make him bitter is to become successful by legends